Welcome to the Healthier Tech Podcast, the show about building a healthier relationship with modern technology. Now here are your hosts, R. Blank and Stephanie Warner. Lisa Valtiera is a leading cross-cultural marketing and advocacy expert in the pharmaceutical and healthcare fields. We will unpack that during today's podcast. She's an award-winning patient advocate and marketer. Lisa and a team of experts are developing a new product called Audaz, which is a virtual self-help to manage anxiety. Audaz provides people the skills to better manage anxiety using virtual reality and cognitive behavioral therapy principles, which we'll also talk about. Welcome, Lisa, to the Healthier Tech Podcast. Hi, R. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you. It's terrific to be here. Great thank to you. have thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for making the time. So just to get right into it, uh, I'm wondering if, 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 you, if healthcare has been sort of a lifelong endeavor for you or when, at what point along the way you got into it. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your, uh, your own journey into, into healthcare. Sure. So, you know, when I look back at my career and even before that, in high school, I worked at a pharmacy, not realizing that I would be touching healthcare the rest of my life. And then in college, I worked at a huge corporation that ran hospitals all over the world. And then when I got out of college, um, you know, I got a job in sales, but then I got into advocating for people living with HIV. And that's an area where I saw huge disparities. So people of color were being left out of the conversation altogether. And that starts with clinical trials all the way to marketing. So that ended up leading me to a job at two major pharmaceutical companies. So I have over 20 years of experience in pharmaceuticals and throughout each juncture, even working at UCLA for a little while at their, at their HIV clinic, I, all these disparities kept popping up, whether it was in mental health care, physical health care, HIV, across the board, I would see these disparities. And so that has lit a fire in me from way back then when I used to advocate for people with HIV, that I realized that this is an ongoing problem. There are no easy fixes but it has to be addressed you know everywhere we can so when i when i hear your personal story i i think i'm i'm starting to see uh what the answer to my next question is going to be but when i read your bio and i saw the dual interests in both patient advocacy and marketing i thought well that that's a weird combination but obviously <laughs> can, can, a bit of a unicorn <laughs> yeah so can you talk about how those two uh, focuses kind of relate to each other Sure. So in my current work in marketing, it's always informed by my advocate brain. So everything I do and my colleagues do, we always think, how is this going to affect the end user? You know, meaning the patient or the healthcare consumer. What do we need to do to make it more accessible, more understandable, more actionable? Because those are actually the three tenets for um, health literacy. And when we look at especially communities of color that tend to have lower health literacy because no one's ever talked to them on a regular basis, we need to augment that. We need to make things easier for people. It's really that simple. Make it easy for them to access, understand, and act upon. That's, I, that's really interesting. So the project you're working on is called Audaz. Yes. So can you, let's just start with the basics. What is it? Sure. So Audaz is an idea I came up with several years ago. Um, one of my best friends is a mental health care professional. She treats people with severe anxiety disorders. She's always told me about her work and she uses cognitive behavioral therapy to treat her patients. One day I was at this conference talking about virtual reality gaming and the entertainment industry. And I thought, wow, that technology, VR technology is amazing. And I couldn't help thinking, I wonder if it would work for what Shana does. I called her that night and I said, hey, Shana, could we do this? And she said, absolutely. So what Audaz is, is a virtual reality program that teaches people the skills to manage their anxiety. Because cognitive behavioral therapy skills are actually very simple and very basic. Anybody can learn them. You don't have to see a therapist to learn them. You don't even have to have an anxiety disorder to access them and to use these skills. So why not make them available easily, on demand, privately, inexpensively for anybody to use in both English and Spanish? I'm not hardly an expert, although apparently, according to you, I don't need to be. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I'm hardly an expert in, in CBT, uh, but it actually reminds I, I was just listening to an old episode of uh, Conan O'Brien's podcast, and um, he talks about specifically how it has been very helpful for him um, in his, uh, how he has addressed his own personal anxiety in his life. Can you talk a little about, because like I say, I, I'm familiar with CBT, but mm -hmm. how, how, but I, I, I don't know the details. How is it that you're using this uh, technique to help address, I mean, anxiety is a, 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 and we'll talk about this, but it's a really serious and growing problem. So how, how are you using this technique? So what we're doing is we're creating scenarios in this VR environment. So imagine this in VR, you're texting with a buddy and they've invited you to a party. Now, if you have social anxiety, this is not going to be fun, right? But you know that as a friend, you need to go to a party because that's the social contract we have with each other. So you also want to keep your word to your friends. So now you've got to decide, am I going to the party or not? There's a series of texts. You decide, yes, you're going to the party. Now, the first step for somebody with social anxiety is walking through that door. So in our exercise, they're standing on the porch of a house. They're hearing all these party sounds behind the door. Glasses clinking, people talking, loud house music. They were expecting a small gathering. So you can see how now we're ramping up this level of anxiety. And then if they walk through the door, they get the reward. Hey, you did it. <laughs> That's all it takes, little baby steps. And then the next module, they come back, they can either repeat the first one, but the next set is you're in the party. Now you have to talk to people you don't know. Whoa, whoa that can be very anxiety producing for a lot of people. If they do that, they get the reward. They also get a little bit of education on anxiety at the end of each module because we want them to really understand why they're doing this. So CBT really is making people practice that which they're afraid of. Yeah. And how in-depth are we talking when, because when I hear the word VR, you know, I, I think of like Oculus headsets and so forth. Mm -hmm. Like what, what, what kind of hardware do people need to so, experience this? Perfect. We're developing this for Oculus, but we're also making it available for people with a smartphone and a cardboard headset oh okay great so okay like uh i think what google cardboard google, or whatever yep, they... yep. 10 bucks <laughs> so uh so obviously you see anxiety as a, a a sufficiently prevalent problem that uh you're building a business plan on addressing it yes. do you have thoughts based on your experience you know why this is becoming such a big problem so I think there are so many factors to this that it's hard to be pithy and say, oh, it's because of this. First of all, the younger generation, this Generation Z, is having an outsized prevalence of anxiety. So, for instance, boomers, 70% have good mental health care, mental health. When you get to Gen Z, only 45% say they have good mental health. That means 65% or 55% don't. That wow. is crazy, right? That, that's not okay. And when you think about it, there's a lot of data to show us that if a person has a mental health issue before they're 25, they're going to have one probably for the rest of their lives. So if we can prevent that from happening, their chances of having good mental health for the rest of their lives increases dramatically. So do you see a role in AUDAS uh, in preventative care? Yes. So um, even though we're building this for people 18 and over, and really the, the groups that we're looking at are between 18 to 30, 33, um, but eventually we will develop modules for children and for their parents to teach them how to build more resilient kids. Because I think another part of the problem here is that our society has put so much pressure on these kids to be good at sports, to be good at music, to be good at academics, to be pretty or good looking. And who can do all of that? I mean, you other know. than me, of course, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you yeah. Have, have power. Come on. Yeah. Well, you bring up a, a really good point. There's so much pressure on young people. And I, I kind of want to dig in a little bit more on that kind of social pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see the use of, or where do you see, if, if any, the use of and prevalence of technology being part of that pressure point? Agreed. So um, Pew 
Institute and Pew Research and The Lancet have just come out with some data showing that, especially for Instagram, it increases body image issues for young women. And even though people may feel more connected by using their social media, it also leads to more isolation. So there's this dichotomy of they may feel connected, but I don't think, and I don't have any data on this, but I don't think that connection is deep. So I was just talking with somebody yesterday about how, the value of girlfriends and how we all hopefully have at least one person who knows everything about us with no judgment, you know, they're, they're there for us. So I've got a few girlfriends that know everything and I can call in a pinch or when I need something and say, hey, I'm having, you know, I need a sounding board. We should all have that. So with social media, you can't really do that because it could easily be screenshot. And as we see in cyberbullying, I mean, there, it's not a safe place to be you. And with all these images, people are posting their best nanosecond when throughout the day, we should all be experiencing all of our emotions. So anxiety included, anxiety is also normal and these kids don't know that. They think that they're supposed to be happy all the time. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> right, right. I mean, because what they don't understand is that, or what a lot of people don't understand, not just younger people, is that you can be happy and sad or joyful and annoyed all at the same time. So are interactions with social platforms, like what you're describing, are, are those scenarios that are covered in Audaz, uh we're platform? Going, we're going to not necessarily take that head on because it's, I haven't even thought about how that would work, but we're, we're going to be tackling things like social anxiety. So going to a party, asking people some, asking somebody out on a date. Apparently people have trouble doing that answering texts. My, to, I have two other advisors on the team and they all treat people with anxiety and specifically younger people. And they said that some of their patients get so caught up in how do I answer this text? <laughs> They're paralyzed with fear of doing the wrong thing. And what we want to teach them is that go ahead and do the wrong thing. Nothing's going to happen. And even if it does, you're going to survive. So here's an interesting exercise that I've gone through myself and I don't suffer from anxiety. I'm very, very fortunate. So why am I doing this? You may be asking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's because I see how it gets people stuck. Right. And it breaks my heart. They, they shouldn't be stuck for these things. So when, let's say when I went hang gliding, my not a normal thing to do. Yes. Anxiety producing, but my questions that I ask myself are what's the worst thing that can happen. Okay. For hang gliding, I could not. <laughs> Fair enough. But then if I do, all my problems will be solved. I, will <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> but, right? I mean, so if that's, you're a, that's, a, that's a CBT framing of, uh, yes. of the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> framing of the situation. So, okay, now if I don't die, then what? Okay, I could maybe sprain my ankle when I land. I've had a sprained ankle before. I'll survive. <laughs> right. And so I run myself, I, I basically, it's, it's what's called completing the story. Or let's take social anxiety. I've been to parties where I didn't know anybody before because the person who invited me hadn't gotten there yet, but I'm going in. So what's the worst that can happen? People don't know me. Okay. That happens when I walk out the door and go to the grocery store. Nobody knows me. So who cares? I could say the wrong thing. Been there, done that. We've all been embarrassed before and we've survived. And you can even make a joke out of it. Oh, I said the wrong thing. I'm so sorry. You know, big deal. So it's telling myself the whole story of what what can happen if if something goes wrong, mm -hmm. or I trip. I was at a party where I spilled some, you know, champagne on my dress. Oh well, the picture was taken. It lives on the internet. <laughs> you know, who cares? No one has ever said, "Hey, Lisa, I saw that spot on your dress." No, yeah, no, I was, I was just wondering where in the, the journey with Audaz are, are you at this moment? So we have um, a demo, but we are looking for beta testers so that we can, when we get funded to actually build the first full module, we want their feedback. We and need so, feedback. yeah, so where, where can people become a, if they're interested, become a yes. beta tester? They can log on to audaz.me, A-U-D-A-Z dot M-E, and there's a form they can fill out and they will be added to the list. And we'll have that link in the show notes. So I'm wondering 
how it is that you view your because you were talking about uh let's say the the negative uh outcomes or results that you're seeing both in research and in, in conversations with people of, of their relationships with platforms like instagram um and at the same time you're looking to technology as a solution or a path to a potential solution for for this this issue how how do you on a personal level how how do you view your personal relationship with technology what role does it play in your life so you know um, like everyone i'm the typical person who sits in front of the tv and i'm also texting with friends or scrolling shopping whatever online is at the same time however i don't really go on social media I'll go on one particular platform to make sure my friends are okay, make sure their parents are okay, because we're in that age group where parents are becoming ill. Um, but I don't post about my life. No one wants to see what I had for breakfast. You know, no one <laughs> it. it's just, who cares? And I, I used to be in, you know, a lot more active on social media, but I realized that it did not add to my life. It didn't add friends to my life because I have the same friends I've had for the past 25, 20, 15 years. So, and then it was a time suck. I'd get on and suddenly an hour and a half has gone. I'm like, oh boy, I'm wasting time here. So my relationship with technology is I use it as a tool because technology in and of itself is neutral. It all depends on how we use it. And I really limit myself and I've been practicing. I know this is radical, but I go grocery shopping without my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but I realize what's going to happen. Nothing. What I guess you don't write your morning? shopping list. You don't write your shopping list down in your phone then. Nope. I, no. <laughs> I use good old pad and paper. I love my little paper lists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so for people who are listening, who are dealing with anxiety, and as we just talked about, that's that's a lot of people. What is one piece of advice that you can give people based on the work that, that you're doing where they can, uh, I, I actually, I, I don't even know if as a starting point, you want to help them kind of realize the scope of what they're experiencing or to help reduce their pain and symptoms. But what is one thing that you would recommend other than signing up for your beta? Yeah. Other yeah. Than, um, really limiting the time. I mean, I've even de deleted one very popular app from my phone because it prevents me from getting all those notifications mm -hmm. so i would you know silence the note if you can't do anything else silence the notifications because yeah. those are and also just from a brain perspective every time you're working on something and you get distracted it mm -hmm. takes you know several at least 20 seconds or more some studies show longer to get refocused yeah, we just covered one study that was uh, talking about 50, it, it, it impacts you for 15 minutes following the notification. Yeah. So yeah, my phone is always in do not disturb. Uh, I have to manually scan and I, I don't have, uh, so I haven't had social media. I mean, uh, my businesses do, but I personally yeah. don't use social media, not since uh, 2015. So it's been, right. a, it's been a while and n never really, I mean, I guess when COVID first hit and I was trapped in an apartment, I had a little bit of a I got a, a back on Facebook for like a, a week or two, but that was it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that would be my biggest advice. And of course I've got tons of advice for people. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. I think that's really great advice, uh, limiting usage and, and really exploring, you know, what, what, which platforms or which uses make you like help you in life and make you feel better versus right. what maybe is a time suck or just doesn't make you feel good. Right, like the selfies. My goodness. <laughs> I'd rather see your lunch. I'm sick of seeing selfies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather see the bird that you saw on your walk or the flower that you pass by yeah. that really is stunningly beautiful or the sunset that you're ignoring. You mm. know, look up and just look around because there are some, I mean, on my, I have a daily walk and I've got fat squirrel one, fat squirrel two, tail <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> that I see on my, I even say, hey, fat squirrel. <laughs> it makes me happy. It's silly, I know, but it's it's those kind. let's get back to those kinds of things. You know, if you have to post a photo, look around you. Mm, love that, love it. 
So I have I have a question here. Um, and it might seem like a really silly one, but I personally did not realize that I had anxiety until my mid thirties. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until even my forties that I realized how much of my life it had, it had, it had become a part of. And now thinking, I, I, I don't, I don't often quote Conan O'Brien on this podcast, but going back to that same episode, I was just telling you about where he talked about CBT. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize that he had anxiety until his mid thirties. And again, for, for people without anxiety, you, it may seem ridiculous to how could you not know? But what I'm asking you, the question I'm asking you is how can people know whether so or not they're having That's a great question. A really good question. In fact, one of my team members, we were having a content meeting and she says, oh, when I go skiing, I make sure I go with a certain group of friends because going up that hill makes me very worried and I start to sweat. And then when I get to the top, I have to take a little time. And the therapist, my co-founder was there. She's like, um, that's anxiety. She's like, it is. So I, <laughs> it's so normal for you. You don't know anything different. Why right. would you name it? It's like, I have an allergy to melons. I didn't know it until an adult because I'd had it my whole life. And I'm telling my mom, oh, my throat scratches when I eat melons and I don't like, and I thought it was universal. I thought everybody felt that, but she's like, dummy, it's an allergy. I'm like, oh. Thanks for pointing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same with anxiety. If you've had this all your life, you think this is the way things are. Everybody feels this way in this situation. So why would you have a name for it? So part of the AUDAS process is to start teaching people about what anxiety is so they can start being aware of, oh, when this happens, I notice my heart rate increases or I get sweaty palms. That's anxiety. So, so there's a... Uh, Di I don't want to use the term diagnostic because I assume that's a, a special word, but there's some type of functionality that allows one to, to self uh, diagnose with AUDAS. Yeah, um, they'll no, um, they'll be given a list of symptoms to kind of check and go, oh, if you kind of like if you have three or more of these, eh, you might be an anxious person. Doesn't mean they have a disorder, though, because what we have to remember is that anxiety is part of our normal, everyday, expected range of emotions okay and that's what I, another part that i think people don't understand again getting back to this idea of i just want you to be happy i really wish people would stop saying that especially parents to children because the idea is that if i'm not happy therefore something must be wrong with me when nobody is happy 24 7 that's just not nor not expected and nor is it should it be that way what we should be telling people is, I want you to be fulfilled. I want you to have purpose. Because when we focus on those things, we can handle the range of emotions that we may have throughout the day much more easily. Because we know that they are expected, they're also transient. That feeling of anxiety, whatever, however it expresses in people, whether it's sweaty palms, racing heart, feeling nauseous, feeling faint, some people throw up, but it's also temporary. Right. You're not going to yeah. that way all the time. It, it comes up and then it'll just go down all on its own. That's what we're teaching people is basically to endure the pain. <laughs> 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 so, uh, Lisa, this this is I, I, I really enjoyed uh, well getting to meet you and also learning about Aldaz. Um, where and or how can our listeners learn more about you and about Audaz? Uh, send a message. There is also a link in, on, on the site to send us an email and it'll get to me and I'll be happy to answer. Okay, so it's audaz.me. And just a, a quick question for everybody um, who's listening, but it, in order to be a beta tester, do you need any special hardware? Uh, no, you just need a smartphone and a Google glasses, you know, cardboard VR glasses. If you have an Oculus, that's fine too. We can send you the links, um, but that's it. Cause all smartphones now are VR capable. So. Okay. All right, Great. right. Uh, before we wrap up, I just want to say, personally, I think what you're doing is absolutely brilliant. And I think that it's going to help a lot of people. Uh, I think that social anxiety, especially when you're young, it affects not only your life personally or, or young people's lives personally, but it's going to affect them for their entire life. And I, I just think what you're doing is, is great mm -hmm. and just genius. It's genius. It's a genius way to leverage technology. 
Thank to you. help. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, you know, really helping people be themselves is yeah. to me the holy grail because everyone should have access to these kinds of skills. They're not magic. And the sooner we get people to realize that they can be themselves without repercussions. And even for those who do get, I mean, yes, bullying happens. People will laugh at you. Who cares? I want them to feel so secure in themselves that they can walk into that party or that job interview or ask for that raise, knowing that they are 100% in their space. Love it. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Th thank you very much for coming on the Healthier Tech Podcast. Absolutely. Hope to see you again. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Healthier Tech Podcast. Remember to check the show notes for all the links and resources mentioned in the show. Please like and subscribe to the Healthier Tech Podcast on Apple, Spotify, or your podcast platform of choice. Get your free quick start guide to building a healthier relationship with technology and our latest information at healthiertech.co.